Welcome to the Literally First Class Podcast, where I will teach you how to overcome anxiety and achieve somatic success. I'm your host, Carrie Ford. I'm a somatic success and holistic life coach here to bring humor, insight, and wisdom to the modern day woman that wants to feel alive in her daily life. You ready? Come on, I saved you a seat in first class. This week on the podcast, I'm sharing five things with you that I learned in taking a staycation. I live in Atlanta. This is like the best time of year here, in my opinion, although fall is pretty great. The beginning of summer and in the middle of spring is absolutely gorgeous here. And it's festival season, so there's a ton to do. But there's so many times that I have other things going on that just seem more of a priority than going to a festival or going to the museum or fill in the blank. I think we all fall into that period because there's there's things that life pulls us to. And if I'm being honest, this has been a really busy building season for me, probably the last six months. We have an entirely new product suite. We've been testing out new offers, new messaging. We built a new Facebook group, which by the way, if you're not in there, look it up. It's the Somatic Success Society. It's specifically for women in business that want to learn unique nervous system strategies. It's awesome. But there's been a lot that we've been building and creating and landing. And so I knew in my body when it was time to just say, you know what? It's time to take a little break here. It's time to refresh and rejuvenate and to practice what I preach, right? So there's five things that I learned from this staycation here in Atlanta. Now, the first day, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself because it was a Monday and I felt like I should be working. How often is it that so many of us high-achieving women, we want to slow down, we want to maybe take Fridays off, we want to be the CEO of our day in our life, and yet when we go to implement and create those things, it gives us more fucking anxiety, right? How many of you have ever tried to slow down and the slowing down feels awful? It gives you more anxiety. It feels bad to your nervous system. So that's an indication that you're in sympathetic dominance, which means that you are likely in a chronic state of stress where the fight flight is on. (laughs) It's like having the on button stuck on. And so the key there is to really learn how to create the capacity in your nervous system and create safety around slowing down so it starts to feel good so that we can take that on switch and turn it off. Now, it's easier said than done, right? We don't just all of a sudden say, you know what, I want to take a vacation. I'm going to do a staycation. And then we do, and then we feel anxious as fuck. So how do we do this? Well, we do that inside my Somatic Success Academy, So I encourage you, if you want to go deeper with this kind of work, you're a woman in business, you're a woman in leadership, you have big responsibilities and a heavy load on your shoulders to learn how to do that while also slowing down and creating a life that you want to live and love, join the Somatic Success Academy because it's honestly just too big of an answer to do in a single episode or even a multitude of episodes. Like it's active coaching, it's learning nervous system strategies, it's learning your own nervous system, and also understanding what I call, and you've heard me talk about, the anxious achiever archetype, right? It's not wrong to be pursuing the next goal, the next evolution of ourselves, but also let's get clear on from what place are we operating from, right? Is it, am I from joy and creation in this moment? Or am I coming from the anxious achiever archetype, right? Which is just this uh, chasing energy, or I am constantly creating the next mountain to climb. And again, I'm not going to go into that into this episode. I actually go into each of those in a free series training in the Somatic Success Society. So you can get a taste of that and also a taste of the academy. If you want to just see what that's about and understand more about the archetypes, you can go do that for free in the in the uh, Somatic Success Society. But it was hard the first day. I was like, I feel like I should be doing something, kind of like that energy of waiting for the other shoe to drop. But it was just from a place of, this is normally what I do on a Monday. So now I'm feeling a little bit lost. <laughs> 
even though I said I wanted time off, what do I do with this time off? So it took me like a day or so to get my footing because it's not like I came into my staycation having a plan. I didn't want to just take my normally packed schedule and then shift it into something cloaked in what looked like a staycation but was chock full of a different type of agenda um, that kept me busy and with my time all filled. I really wanted to expand and explore what that looked like and felt like for me. So day one, didn't know what to do with myself. In fact, I can't even remember. I think I went to the gym. I lifted. It was like a pretty light day. It kind of took me a, a day or so to to be with that. And then the second thing I learned was it's, well, and I know this, but there's going to be times where you have conflicting experiences. So I'm saying I want this staycation and then I simultaneously don't know what the fuck to do with myself. Because as you know, I've been exploring, well, what are my hobbies? Like, what do I do when I don't have to do the thing? What do I do when I'm not purposing my play? You know, I talked about painting. I think in the way beginning, if you want to go back, I don't even remember which episode it was, but we can find it and put it in the show notes. And I talked all about, you know, avoiding painting because the fear was, well, now I'm going to create this gallery where I start selling paintings or create an Etsy shop, when really that takes away from the entire purpose of play, which is that there is no purpose at all. It's just simply playing to play. And so I'm mindful of that, right? But there's confusing feelings when you say you want time off, and then you simultaneously feel bad in your body (laughs) for having time off or this sense of like, now what? So I experienced a little of that. I sat with those feelings. I had a good cry. And then I decided I wanted this. So let's make the most of it. What do I want to do? Which, funny enough, felt a little bit overwhelming because it was like, oh my gosh, I have all this time. So I started making a list. It wasn't a to-do list. It was kind of like a wish list of all the things that I really wanted to, you know, experience for the week. And I just started jotting down ideas. Everything from you know, minimalizing, is that a word? Making my closet more minimalist, uh, like cleaning things out. I love organizing, going to a museum, getting the car washed. Like I love taking care of my car. Those things, hot yoga, things I wanted to experience, going and sitting outside on a patio somewhere to have lunch. There were, there were several things. So that brings me to number three. I got to have the experience of remembering hobbies that I have forgotten about. So I did sign up for hot yoga and I used to take hot yoga a couple years ago during, it was like right before COVID. I had signed up for like a year membership. It was great. In fact, I've gone with a couple, a couple of my friends here in Atlanta and that place closed down during COVID. And then when they came back and they opened business back up, that's when I started dating Jake and we were traveling. Anytime I didn't have the kids, I was essentially traveling, either to meet Jake in a different city or to have him meet me here or me to go go to LA where he was at the time. And so I fell out of that practice. And not only that, when they started opening classes back up, it was like super limited because they were afraid of COVID and all this. So I just, I fell out of the practice. I tried a different place here in Atlanta and I didn't love it. So then I tried another place in this area And that's what I did uh, this past Friday. And it was lovely. I feel like I remembered that I love hot yoga and how good that feels to my body and my mind and my spirit. And so I think I'm going to join that place. It felt, gosh, it just felt so grounding and nourishing. I got up at sunrise. uh, It was still dark out. And I drove, it was like 10 minutes away from my house. And that ritual was just perfect. The world was quiet. I got to wake up with my body in I love and I love heat in the heat of the hot yoga room. It was and it was a great it was a great flow, beautiful flow, just challenging enough. It was fairly advanced, I would say, but just it was great. If you can't tell I'm like gushing about it. And after that, I went to a coffee shop I hadn't been to yet that's somewhat new. And I just wandered through, got myself a latte, and I was just, I just had such a great time. So I remembered hobbies I had, hot yoga being one of them. Another hobby I remembered that I had, and this is such a funny concept to remember hobbies, but going to museums. So if you didn't know, I actually have a four-year BFA, a Bachelor in Fine Arts. I went to school for advertising design. 
And I did put that into practice. I was an art director in New York City for a couple years right out of college. Uh, and I've I've oscillated in my career in many ways. I've always found my way back to coaching. And, you know, I've been a personal trainer and all the things. And so anyway, I love art. I love museums. I feel inspired. I feel like the world is my playground. And I feel an invitation to just be weird, which I love. Like be the uniqueness of you. And so I went to the museum, the High Museum here in Atlanta, and I remembered, ooh, I really love museums. I love art. And so that was amazing. And it also was in a different part of town I don't normally go to, which served as a pattern interrupt, right? I work from home, as many entrepreneurs do, especially after 2020. And so sometimes getting dressed now, I mean, who else has fallen out of practice with this? Getting dressed and getting out of the house to do something different than you normally would, it might take more intention now. And so I was really excited to go to the museum, especially because I'm an introvert, right? I can easily fall into some of these um, daily, daily practices, if you will. And that brings me to number four, which is new places light me up. They make me feel alive. But I don't actually have to leave the state or the city to experience some of that novelty. I can just go to a coffee shop after yoga, or I can enjoy lunch at a patio I've never sat on before, which I did do. Or I can go to the museum that I haven't been to in, oh my word, like over five years. So it was fun and it made me feel alive and free and it was it was great. So just knowing what lights you up and paying attention to what in your body gives you the sense of aliveness. And then number five, and this is probably a great way to sum up the entire week, the entire staycation. If you want a different view, you need to change where you're sitting. If you want a different view, you need to change where you are sitting. Even if it's in the same city and state that you live in, you don't have to go to Tulum or Italy to experience something different. You can and you should, and I want you to book the fucking flight. I mean, hell, book the flight to the retreat I'm hosting in August. We still have a few spots left for that, and it's an amazing space. Which, by the way, side tangent, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Elizabeth Gilbert, and some really amazing people have been to this retreat space and have co-hosted and been facilitators at this space. It's called Saren B Farms. You can find it on serenbee.com, S-E-R-E-N-B-E. And it is a magical portal. It's a thousand acres of self-sustaining farmland and everything is farm to table fresh. So the food is high vibe. It's organic. We're going to have a gluten-free menu, daily like bamboo cold press juices. When I tell you the combination of juices, oh my God, the juices were so good. In fact, one of them uh, one of my clients was carrying around the almond creamer one that they made because it was perfect for coffee. It was ugh, it's so good. And it's all seasonal, right? Because it's farm to table. So I'm excited because the last retreat we did there was in the fall. And now we get to experience a summer retreat, summer experience. So they have multiple pools. They have a spa. Like, it's just incredible. So if you haven't checked out the retreat, the Made for More retreat, we still have a few more spots. Book a fucking flight for that right? If you want a different a different experience, you want a different view, you have to change where you sit. You have to get out of your normal environment. Whether it's your house, you don't have to leave your city. Although, listen, if you want to, come to my retreat. It's just about choosing something different that interrupts the everyday. It's why Jake and I go on walks in the middle of the afternoon. It's so easy to just melt in front of the computer or the couch. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I was going to create content. Now I'm sitting here scrolling or I'm just sitting in front of my laptop and I'm not really getting anything done. Want to go for a walk? We just interrupt it all the time. And to interrupt it, you have to practice that. You have to practice that spontaneity, especially if you're more prone to the melting, <laughs> the freeze response on the couch, right? So you don't have to go anywhere to have these amazing experiences, but you do have to have intention to go somewhere different than where your daily day brings you. You just need to. So I hope and invite you, if you have not taken a staycation to do so, I'd be curious what you explore in your city. And if you're craving a different view and you're ready to change where you sit, come do that in an elevated, luxurious environment. 
Serenby prides itself on being relaxed luxury, and it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. I, I'll drop the link here in the notes so you can check that out. But the accommodations, everyone has their own private room. They're modern. They're beautifully designed with architecture and intention and natural elements in each of the rooms, on the balconies, in the plants around the whole community. Uh, we'll drive golf carts around, which was like kind of an inside joke last time because my assistant, Robin, that travels to come be part of these experiences, we were just joking that she had like a heavy foot on the gas. So that was a running joke. What else did we do? We had a sound healer. Her name is Rebecca Turk. She's actually done sound healing for people like Usher, Sarah Blakely, who invented Spanx, some really high level celebrities. So she's incredible. We'll do an evening sound bath. It's by Candlelight. She pulled a bunch of tarot cards last time, actually, which was such a nice touch because every single card that each woman pulled, we were like, oh, this is like, this is like freakishly appropriate and like so divinely guided. So that was fun. Um, we did a lot of amazing things. And I actually recently did a post, if you haven't read it yet, about, and she shared this in the society, the uh, the Facebook group, but about the release of anger that she experienced and how as a result of that, she had this like crazy up level when she got home. I mean, an unsolicited raise that was like nearly 10, a 10% raise almost, an increase in her stock options also unsolicited by an increase of like 20 to 30%. All I mean, you have, it's crazy, all the stuff. She shared it in our Facebook group. She let me interview her. You can go check that out or you can read my post, although you won't see her interview in there. It's just in the exclusive group. It's just incredible what what women can create when they are free to do so, like within their own body. And so we're going to do all sorts of magical stuff like that. But Anyway, I encourage you to pick a different view, to interrupt the day, and to normalize the abnormal, right? Like, fuck the daily grind, man. Fuck the daily grind. And it's so easy to get caught up in that, myself included. Otherwise, day one, I would have not been sitting there being like, what do I do with myself? In fact, did I write it in my journal? I'm going to read this to you guys. You're going to laugh <laughs> because... Being with what is, is also acknowledging what's real. And so I wrote, what I've learned so far, I'd rather be working. That's how uncomfortable taking time off was for me after I had not done it for so long. And so, whoa, that's crazy. But that was very real, real for me in that moment. That didn't feel true for me at the end of the week. And I knew it wasn't really true, but it was a very real valid feeling for me in that moment. And so I had my pity party of taking time off and then I decided no, I'm going to I'm going to have a great fucking time this week. And I did and it was amazing and I invite you to do the same. So whether you're coming to the Made for More retreat, you can apply for that using the link below in the show notes or you do a staycation. Either way, take some time off. Take some time off. It's absolutely crucial and essential that you charge up so that you can take off. I hope that whoever listens to this episode <laughs> finds that it falls on the appropriate ears. And if this lands for you, share it to social, tag us at Literally First Class. We will repost you. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love a subscription from you as well as a review that always helps us push it higher to reach more people. So if you've gotten value, you've gotten some laughs, you love the leaf blowers, whatever, I would love a review and I would love for you to subscribe and share. Have a great week and we'll see you on the next episode. I hope you enjoyed your flight and I'll see you on board again soon. Seriously though, thanks for listening. If you're ready to take this work deeper and upgrade your mind, I want to invite you to join us inside my Millionaire Mindset program. This is where you'll start using my guided meditations to help you overcome anxiety and experience even more abundance. When you join, you'll have access to my entire audio library. Head over to elevatewithcarry.com and we'll see you inside.